Hey, I'm Daniel, and on this episode of The Film Crazy Show, I was joined by actress Sarah Dumont, who plays Morgan in the new film, Drive All Night. Drive All Night is a neo-noir that could be described as a surreal fever dream about a cab driver, Dave, who drives a character called Kara around, around San Jose for an evening. Sarah Dumont plays the role of Morgan, a local waitress in the film that is a friend of Dave's and she is the one that grounds the film in realism. This conversation was recorded towards the end of March at, at the film's last festival stop. But right now, you can catch Drive All Night as it plays at CamFest 2021 until Sunday, May 23rd. And the link to tickets will be attached down below. You can also check out my other interviews for Drive All Night in the links below as I also spoke with the actors Yutaka Takuchi, who plays Dave, Lexi Hammonds, who plays Kara, and the writer and director of the film, Peter Shea, as well. For this episode, here is Sarah Dumont to introduce us. Hi, my name is Sarah Dumont. I play Morgan in the film Drive All Night, and you are watching the film Craziest Show. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. And I am Daniel, the host of the film Craziest Show. It's great to have you here. Well, thanks for having me, Dan. <laughs> awesome. So I, I wanted to start by asking, what, what attracted you to the script for Drive All Night? The script I found very bizarre. And I liked that. It was like weird in a good we- in a good way, because uh, I was like, I don't really uh, know how it ends. Like, it, there's so many open questions in the film, and then they never really get answered, which I love. I love a movie where it's like four people watch it, and then they have four distinct different ideas. Like to me, that's like an art film. It's really art. Like. And it's more and more and more rare these days. It's just, I feel like I watch a movie or I read a script and by act two, I already know how it's going to end. Okay. Or I watch a show and by episode one, I already know who the killer is. Like I like it to be more nuanced and I had never done a neo-noir film and wanted to like try what that was. And then also the character was more offered to me. I didn't audition for it. And for once I was, offered a character that was not sexualized that was also not the badass and I'm like oh like that I want to show that I can also play that I don't have to always be like super strong and aggressive or be sexualized in any way so I was all for it and then they were like we're gonna shoot the whole thing in 12 days and I'm like you're crazy but (laughs) all right and then I was supposed to film two nights so I was like, cool, I get this, you know, money for, for just two nights of work. And then they're like, actually, we're going to shoot the whole movie in eight days now. And I'm like, you're insane. Wow. And they're like, but that would mean like you shoot just one night. And I'm like, awesome, let's do it. So, I, you know, I flew into San Jose. Stephanie picked me up, um, drove me to the hotel to like, you know, kind of sleep and like get a, you know, sleep during the day and, and wake up at night. I didn't sleep. I, I was like too excited. And um, we filmed all night long and it was the smallest crew I've ever filmed with, it, which was awesome. And it was actually a really good time. I'm sure, I'm sure none of us looked our best <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> on that little amount of sleep. But yeah, it was, it was kind of something like, unique and magical about working with that small of a crew. I mean, one of the ADs is actually the person who scored the movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like we were trying to count it. We had this group Zoom with, with you know, all the main producers and, and actors and Peter. And we were trying to count off how many people in total the crew was because they were like, I think it was like 14. And I'm like, I didn't see 14 people. Like, what are you on about? And like, we like counted and we were just counting, like including people that were not on set. It was like 10. <laughs> wow. Because I know, know Peter co-edited it and wrote and directed it too. So Yeah, that, but his, his AD was also the composer like who scored it. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I think William did an amazing job, the DP. I mean, the, the film looks like aesthetically, it's it's beautiful film. Like it's shot really, really well. I got really excited on like after we, were, we started filming and it wasn't my scene. So I was just like watching and, you know, our little miniature video village. And I was like, whoa, this looks great. <laughs> like, <laughs> awesome. I got, I started to get stoked about it. And yeah, and then finally I saw the, the finished product and, I, if 
if I'm like the lead lead in something, I actually really hate watching it. Like, it's so uncomfortable for me. It's like, I don't know why. It's a weird thing. And I'm just like, ugh, the whole time that I'm on screen. But since I have a more smaller part, I was I was definitely really stoked to watch it. And I wanted to watch it before I did all the interviews. And then I was, I was like, okay, I'm not crazy. Like, this is the good weird. This is like way better than I thought it was gonna be. Like, you know, when I read the script and it's Lexi is frightening and talk is great. <laughs> it's a beautiful film. Like, it's cool. It's an art piece. It's not like, it ain't no Michael Bay movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So going back in the conversation a bit, you did you did you enjoy being able to play to your softer side, I guess you could say? Yeah, I do. I like to play everything. Um I love to ever I love doing comedy. Comedy's fun, it's a good time. No one takes themselves seriously on a comedy set. It's like it has it's not just when the camera's rolling, like people are constantly joking and it's fun, but I think that there's a, a hell of a lot more fulfillment and therapeutic value to shooting drama, at least for me. Like I could kind of took a gap year right before COVID, and then everyone took, you know, an involuntary gap year from acting, thinking like, oh, stability is gonna help me, like, you know, really my sobriety journey and like I just want stability for the first time and actually like it was the most destabilizing thing possible for me to stop acting I didn't realize like how much I actually use it for therapy but it is nice to be able to play something or be offered to play something that no one else really sees me doing because it's it's Hollywood so you look a certain way and they want to cast you a certain way Okay, so you were able to play against type, which is awesome. Yeah, against stereotype. But yeah, I definitely do have a big old soft side. Like, yeah, like I'm a big sister. I love, I love babies. I love animals. It's it's you adult humans that I can be a little bit more confrontational with. But you know, <laughs> I actually do have a really really soft sweet side too. So it was nice to be able to play that, and nice that someone else would picture me playing that. Okay, cool. Now you said you, you said you had filmed for one night. Like, I feel like it's one night. I feel like it's safe to say that it's a Sarah Dumont film all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you talk is driving all night. Uh, what, the whole thing shot at night. I don't think they shot. They shot one day. I mean, we shot through the night, and the last shot that we shot was the sunrise. Okay. Um, and they shot over a month, but only the weekends because the the way like they just really there was no way to get because Yutaka was coming back from Japan. Lexi was leaving to the UK. Um, Kat- oh my god, I'm so bad with names. Katrina, who is this singer? Mitch, who is Midnight Judy? I don't know. I feel awful. I I can edit it out if you want me to look up. No, 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 it's fine. It's Katrina or or Natalia. I'm so sorry. Midnight Judy was was you know in between like needing to come back from Russia so they had to like the the cast you know Peter really liked the cast he wanted they didn't want to have to switch the cast so instead of shooting 12 dates consecutively they shot two days on a weekend and then two days of the next weekend and two days the next weekend and two days the next weekend okay so I'm sure for everyone else involved it was brutal but for me it was a lot of fun <laughs> that's that's such a diverse cast. I mean, yeah, you pro- there's not that many people in the movie and they're all pretty different. That's neat, that's neat. Um, I, I, like when we were talking about the script earlier, I feel like the surrealism really lends into the unpredictability of it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, it is like neo-noir. I don't know what that meant. And it was like, that it was really <laughs> true to like, yeah, it's it's like the I've I've read reviews where they've described it as kind of like a fever dream, which is what I kind of liked about it because it's like, is she a vampire? Are there vampires? Is mom boss? Is he dreaming? Is any of this real? Um, you're so it's confusing, but it's like you you do end up coming to your own conclusions throughout it. I thought it was like, I don't know what whether you want to call it like serendipitous or ironic or coincidental but um the the man's voice like 
you know, the boss's voice on the camera that plays. And it says, he says, desperate people will always react out of fear or always act from fear because that is how they've been conditioned their entire lives. And then that comes and it plays in again in the movie. And I thought that was like, I don't know, that kind of gave me a little goosebump moment because we filmed this before the pandemic, before, okay. obviously not before Black Lives Matter because I remember 2014 Ferguson, um, but before George Floyd and the whole world got involved in the Black Lives Matter movement and started rioting and really pushing for change. And like, I just felt like that statement that is made is such a mighty statement. You know, people will, desperate people will always react in fear because they've been conditioned to do that their whole lives. And I thought that was kind of powerful and cool, but yeah, I mean, it definitely wasn't planned, but it's certainly fitting. Okay. Did you cool. see the film, Jen? Did you see it? <laughs> yeah, 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 I did. Okay, good. Yeah. You're like, wait, did I, I don't remember this part. <laughs> no, I, I know, I, I just, I suck at, at talking some stuff that's thought provoking. So I just did not know how to add on to the to the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. narrative yeah. that you bring about. Yeah, I mean you don't you don't have to get you don't have to get in get into it, but it's 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 just like people reacting out of fear on on rage and okay. being up. And it was I wasn't talking specifically on Black Lives Matter, but with the pandemic. No, I feel yeah. Um, and then more recently, the shooting you know, and this anti-Asian violence following this COVID-19 virus that started in China. People reacting out of fear. Why did yeah. they do that? Because they've been conditioned that way their whole life. It's this like pattern, like it's toxic pattern of humanity. So I was like, I was like, whoa, it's creepy that this film unintentionally really touched on that. Okay. And then comes out at exactly the same time. So I don't know, that, that tripped me out, but. Okay, that's. Me. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought of that. That's actually really interesting. Okay. See, now, I, you're, now you're thinking about it. I got you thinking. You, think, and, you don't have to get, you don't, we don't have to get deep in political advisions. No. You can, you, can touch on, you can touch on it vaguely. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I'm also just thinking back to my chat with Lexi where she like, we were talking about her conspiracy theories as her character and she brought up like the simulation kind of thing and like mm -hmm. and also just my chat with peter a bit ago when he brought up something that was like 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 the bar that you guys shot in um yeah. it was it was made like it was open six months before he shot the film and then that's just making me think okay with all that going on and how you bring that back into this film we really are living in a simulation <laughs> Yeah, it's really creepy about that because it's like the way that he like wrote this this bar place before it existed. And then we shot in it while it existed and <laughs> make this meta statement about human nature. <laughs> like, and now we're going to like all implode on each other. And then it happened. It's creepy. It's like, whoa. So yeah, no, that's, the, that's why I like the script because it was weird like that. And it's still weird now. <laughs> okay that's true um also with, with with your character you i think it's fair to say that morgan is probably the person who's most grounded in the realism um yeah. what, what was that like for you kind of just being like a pillar for the film um i d just didn't i just don't look at it like that okay when i'm filming okay. um yeah, you know, it's it's definitely very obvious that that there is dark and light, and Morgan is the representation representation of light. But um, in my personal opinion, I don't think that you can play that, and I don't think that you should play that or like try to play an idea, um, unless I'm gonna play something where I'm playing another an actual historical person. Um, like Margo Robbie and Tanya Harding, like you got to do a lot of prep, like, you you know, how the way she talks, her mannerisms, where she comes from. Um, this is a real person with tons of video footage of, um, and she nailed it on the head, like stuff like that needs a lot, a lot of prep. And then sure. physicality, like with action, I, which I love doing, you need a lot, a lot of prep. Like I want to get the, I want to be physically perfect. I want the choreography perfect because I want to be able to get that big shot done perfect the first time 
And then like, you know, all the stunt departments, like your best friend for the rest of the filming, like that's clutch. But other than those two circumstances where you're you're playing an actual person, uh, an existing person, or you're doing stunt choreography, I don't like to over prepare. I don't like to overthink my work at all. I really just like to see myself and see the story and, and the dialogue and, see what's happening there and be like okay so what would be my circumstance it's like my circumstance and situation that would make me feel this way to give me the motivation to say these lines okay. I think about it like that um yeah so I was like I'm I've got a kid at home and I you know there's these weird customers like Frank always bragging like yeah I got these models and stuff and he's pretty gross and you know you talk as characters just chill and quiet and kind of intriguing and not um, encroaching and doesn't try to ever really hit on Morgan. Um, I'm not really too like, I know I'm attractive because, but like creepy old man, men hit on me. I do I like, he's not got, I don't really know, clearly a deep thinker, have a lot of time. Why am I still a waitress even though she's got this artistic brain because I have a kid, because that's important. Like those are the things that I think about um, prior to filming and then yeah I just like to be super super present and really listen and take in everything and ignore nothing and just try to be me in okay. that mind frame but yeah if I would sit there and be like okay you're the you're gonna have to you're carrying this film I think the pressure <laughs> would cause me to so much anxiety that I would just suck the whole time <laughs> You definitely didn't suck, so it's good. <laughs> good, good. I definitely did put more pressure on myself, like when I was first starting out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the the philosophy that I was in the way I was trained to act at Anthony Mindell Actors Workshop here in LA, and something that's always made sense to me. Um, but I I don't think that I really ever got super great at applying it until after I quit drinking about four years ago. Okay. Well. Congrats. Yeah, thanks. I think with a, with a clear head, it finally like clicked in <laughs> to apply okay. it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something that's a lot easier said in theory than actually done. Like, yeah, don't don't worry about those things. I mean, okay. obviously on the first day when the, the cameras start rolling, you're like, you're like, oh my God, like if I screw this up. <laughs> yeah, like there's, I feel like there's so many anxieties to deal with in that way, right? Yeah, you gotta just kind of let it go. Everyone gets like first, first scene shakes, you know? Some people don't, but I don't know. I think that they're just good at hiding it. I don't really believe that they don't get nervous on the first take. But they're just acting, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't believe it. Like, I don't know why he's lying to kick it. Like, come on, you got a little nervous. It's like a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> okay, also with, with all, the, all you talking about your your performance and everything. I just wanted to bring up something from my chat with Utaka. And he just, he either complimented your acting and just how you're so natural and that helped him play into himself as Dave. Um, you always try to be like naturalistic in your performance? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ex's mom, who I'm very close with, has this saying that she's always said to her kids and says to me and now I say to people, and it's like, the only normal people on the planet are the ones you don't know yet. Cool. Right? Like, you, no one's normal. Like, so yeah, like, people are like, oh, play natural, naturalistic, or I hate that. We're like, how did it happen organically? But yeah, actually, I do want it to, to happen organically. I'm like, be really present and like really, really listen and co connect with whoever I'm on set with, especially the person I'm acting with. I think it's, I've, I've worked with method actors before and had great experiences and kind of horrible experiences <laughs> where like, you know, I worked with a method actor and it was a very small part luckily for me because <laughs> Cause I didn't know, I, I didn't really realize he was method okay. at the time. And his character is like very withdrawn and antisocial. So as soon as they would say cut, he would just like turn around and leave. Oh. 
and like go off by himself and I was like oh this guy really doesn't like me oh <laughs> and then at the rap party he's like hey Sarah how are you doing and I was like um I thought you hated me it's like oh no no one told you I'm sorry like no 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 that's just like the character I was playing I'm like more on the method side I'm like oh my god okay but no I liked it I like to do it yeah the more natural way I just try to be really really present and and take yeah like I said like notice everything and ignore nothing and an acting teacher gave that like advice during a lecture beginning a class once and I don't know just it stuck okay uh, yeah I, I, I feel like like for someone like me who's like so self-conscious I feel like that would be such a bad like onset experience being like oh you don't like me <laughs> wow uh, yeah like I'm also very very self-conscious I think that most most actors and you know artists are like I mean like w w yeah if you're you write write music like you write love songs and heartbreak and or you you play or you paint you paint out emotions or you, you do this job or you act out emotions I think that like yeah if you're getting any good at it usually it's because you're a little a little more sensitive than the other you know your average Joe yeah it would like really hurt my feelings I was like oh my gosh like this guy really hates me oh I mean, it was a relief at the end, but yeah, no, on the day, and it was just starting out too. So I was just like, oh, I, what I thought was happening was that like my acting was that bad, but he was just like, who booked you? Like, that's really how I felt. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that was maybe, I mean, we, we, I came in in the middle of the project and if someone has method their method, they shouldn't have to break their process to explain to people. Um, but I think that maybe someone on set should have explained that. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe, you know, just, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Would've been> nice. <laughs> was, there, was there any method actors on Drive All Night? No, 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 no. no uh, you talk and I have a very I think more of a similar style where we really try to just connect to the character okay and and play that character of ourselves Lexi also does that but but Lexi's off-camera self and Kara are two different bitches <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I don't know, I think that like, everyone's a thousand different versions of themselves. Like you after six or seven beers with a girl you're trying to sleep with, and then you at Sunday roast with your grandma and your auntie, two very different versions of Daniel, right? Like they're pretty much yeah. different people, but they're both genuinely and authentically Daniel. I don't know that Lexi is genuinely psychopathic. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> so I was like I don't like I don't yeah yeah but I mean but like I mean when she turns into Kara I was like so I don't like to over prepare I'll I like to run the lines without an inflection so that you know we caught them out loud before we're on camera then okay. and sometimes there's not even time for that and luckily there was time to at least run it once or twice and she she ran it with her American accent but not um in in character and, and me neither and then when we did the actual shot where she's like asking about my kid that like moment where I'm like wow that's her like wait that's not in the script <laughs> okay like the script was I think like that's a little personal okay but like she was just so stuff. intense where I'm just my natural reaction was wow like you're 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 a piece of work <laughs> nice what was what was it like doing that scene with her where she's just like it's very combative almost that's what it was like how would it read on camera was what it was like and then okay. um yeah we did we did her coverage first and then like you know they they were done and like you know she broke character for a second she goes I really like how you were like wow and I was like yeah because that was my real reaction oh believe me I'm gonna do the same thing on my coverage like, yeah like <laughs> you're intense 
<laughs> but no, I think that we we had a little bit really great time. She was very, very funny and um, easy to talk to. And we, you know, just like, I wouldn't say normal, but relatable. Yeah. We, That's we had a good a, way. Yeah, we were, all, we were all, we're just there from sundown to sun up. In <laughs> little like arcade slash diner place, like, with our crew, like, you know, we were our own stand-ins and, and like, you know, Crafty was like a table. <laughs> like when we had meals, it was like, there was so little, it wasn't like, um, you know, all right, everybody break for, you know, lunch is back and there. It was just like, okay, now we're gonna have lunch. And everyone kind of like sat down family style and at Subway, it was pretty cool. <laughs> nice. No. Yeah. Obviously you just came in for the one night, but did you have any like rehearsal time with anyone? like? online or no. not really no 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 so so was there was there a challenge like creating that chemistry with Yutaka and your castmates at all or not really no I, I like I don't do theater I think theater is a different um art uh I don't do it not because I don't like it or not because I don't appreciate it but because I get really terrible stage fright okay. um so I think that if I would have to do a theater production and I didn't have, you know, just hypothetically speaking, didn't have this crazy straight strike, it would be a really huge freaking challenge to go ahead and, and do a play without rehearsal. Um, with sitcoms, we rehearse all week and then shoot on a Friday. And if they have pickups, they shoot them on a Saturday. So it's basically like the sweetest gig if you're an actor <laughs> okay. it's pretty much like the most stable shooting schedule possible um but no I, I when I'm filming I actually don't like to yeah like I said I hate I don't like to over rehearse that's not how I learned to act when I first started acting or before I started acting I was modeling and I was based in New York and I was coming out here for a client called Fredericks I don't know if Fredericks of Hollywood is come shoot them every month and then I would audit an acting class here in LA. So like one of the first classes I audited was a Stella Adler class. And I was like, yeah, I don't know why you think that I would be good at this. Or like, I don't get this. Like, what do you mean? Like these people like, <laughs> you see you're supposed to rehearse like for two hours every night independently before coming to class and like doing like all this stuff. And then Meisner, I did, I audited that. And I was like, I mean, a lot of this stuff makes sense, but again, it's like the time consumption, like who has time? And at the time I was working a lot as a model. I barely had time to do anything, let alone like, do 14 hours of rehearsals um, that I'm paying someone to do unsupervised. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, and then I audited at Anthony Mindell and I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Like, I, I feel like I could do this. Like, this would be fun. I get it. I understood Anthony. I understood the lecture. It was much more of a um, learning about life and yourself. And then that's acting. You know, and like, and, and the way I was trained is you intro into this, this method of, of, of training acting, you cold read. So you, for seven weeks, you get a new script, like the day of, and then you do that. And then that helps you audition. And yeah, when you're auditioning in a traditional pilot season, uh, you get sometimes like 12 pages of dialogue at 9 PM at night and you need to go and perform them live in front of a casting director at 11 a.m. And then you get nine more pages and do the next, do it the next day. So I'm really lucky I got trained the way I was, but yeah, I know it, it didn't present a problem to not rehearse. I think that you can, you can create problems from over rehearsing. Okay. Yeah. It helps for camera. It helps for a lot of things. Like there, there is, a need for it in certain circumstances, but I think that over rehearsing can really just like screw it up. Because okay, you'd no. rather well. Okay. Like that natural reaction that happened to Lexi doing Cara's lines and me gen my genuine reaction to her doing that. If we would have rehearsed that for we you know two hours a night for weeks on end, it wouldn't have been the same. If we were doing a play, it's different. You know, you have to run through the whole play and you're acting out to people all the way, you know, in the back. 
and they've got to feel your inflection and they've got to understand your, your motivation. And then like, you know, Adler and Meisner makes a lot of sense, but on camera, it's like on a macro lens, like picking up those like superhuman, like little nuanced, weird things that we do. I think you lose them when you over rehearse. Sorry, I just rambled on about that. It was like 10 minutes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I love listening to you <laughs> or just talk in general. Um, also, just with, do you feel like you were rehear over rehearsed at all for like your, say, your guest spots on the league or um, workaholic? The league? Oh my God. The league is like on the polar opposite end of the spectrum. Do you know how long the script was that I got when I shot the lead? It was a one page long. Oh, okay. <laughs> one page. And it was not, the page was not full. <laughs> like 30 seconds kind of thing no like i mean like literally like one page being like so this happens and then they talk about it and then this happens and then this, like it's just basic beats okay of like they're in this place something here this place something here like a little like crucial moment there oh my god like that was that was that was crazy that was so much fun and a great time and I'd like yeah like until I actually booked the league and did the league I, I had no like the, my appreciation level for the actors on that show and that show like skyrocketed because I had no I had no idea I knew they did a lot of improv I didn't know that the whole freaking thing is improv oh Okay, yeah, I get it now. Oh, okay. right. like, <laughs> like I didn't know. Yeah, no, like I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't know that I was gonna have what's his bucket space over my boobs until like that day. <laughs> what was your reaction to learning that? What do you think it would be? Are you uh. fucking joking me right now? <laughs> And also they're like, yeah, that I was like, hey, the script, and I got the script like a couple days, but like after I was confirmed. Okay. So it was like, what do you mean? Like, uh, like I was like, and she was hooking up with the, you know, Ron, Ron the sex addict. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, like, no, like you're really hooking up, like you're having sex. And I was like, I kind of had a freak out. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and to like you know they kind of make me feel better a lot of the they're like they're like I get they're like no no, no like I, I get I get it but like you got to think about it as just a joke like how many times have we had to have gay sex for a joke me and you me and you how many like four four or five like you know they just like, made all these like you know they really made me feel more comfortable but I mean I was uncomfortable doing it obviously like because I was not really super aware um, okay. Probably made it way worse. Um, but yeah, no, like there's there's really no prep for that show at all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I okay. I knew that I was gonna be one of his his plastic surgeon patients, and that Mark Duplass would would meet me while my face was still bandaged up, and that I was supposedly very ugly before. But then Mark Duplass has actually already seen the computer generated image of what I'm going to look like. So then my character's like, oh, he just likes me for me because he didn't even know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And that like, I knew that there was going to be a scene where like, but then, you know, Mark, but then Mark doesn't, Duplass doesn't have sex with her because he can't, because once she like takes off her top, all he can see in his head is his buddy's face but like this was all verbally said to me before i agreed on i did not know that they were gonna actually want to shoot his actual face onto my boob <laughs> like, but like it, by the, that point we had already done the dang sex and so like i was like are you fucking getting me like and it was funny like i'm gonna have like green screen pasties on my boobs and like i mean as a model i mean I've been wearing far less uh that was more funny than anything but it was a it was funny those all of them are super super talented and um 
like approachable and fun and welcoming. But yeah, that's the polar. Op- There's no rehearsal on the league. Are you crazy? There's not even a script on the league. Okay. They're just, they're just going for it. Okay. Good to that's know. That's all made up on the fly. <laughs> okay. I, I've seen I've seen a couple episodes of it, but like you having you explain I haven't seen your episode, but having you explain it, that's hilarious. Like I've seen on your IMDb page, like the the yeah, the, the, it's the like pasties. Yeah. We, we have that's great. Yeah, I mean, I wish that was not this like, but <laughs> I was like, my my brain just went. That's on my IMDb. Oh, I'd be like, who maybe. controls my IMDb? <laughs> maybe we'll get that off there. <laughs> it's a funny thing. It's like it's his bald head on my boobs. It's not like my actual nipples or something. Like it's it's comic. It's far more comical than sexual. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I don't. Th- I don't think it's been super killed by over rehearsing. Um, I don't. I mean, I, I think I've been over rehearsed on projects, but yeah, it's I think it's just better not to talk about <laughs> which ones they were. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. Also, um, <laughs> with your your modeling career, do you do you prefer acting or do you prefer modeling? If you do you want. Oh my it? god, acting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, modeling is is not a glamorous job. It's a very very difficult job. Um, it's twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, three hundred sixty five days a year. I actually scout models, and I spent a little bit of time like doing scouting and development for um, a subdivision of Elite LA. Okay. Um, and so that's something the- I try to explain to the girls all the time is when they're coming on, like, listen, your job as a model you're not, it's not because you're pretty. That's not what you're getting paid $2,000, $4,000 a day for. That's not what they pay, pay you for at all. Because if that was the case, clients would have their rack of clothes in a van and drive down Sunset Boulevard because this is LA and everyone in LA is beautiful. And they would go, they'd stop with the camera guy and go, hey, you, you're gorgeous. Can you put this t-shirt on and be on my billboard? And they'd snap your picture and go, here's $10,000. But that's not how it works. Your job as a model is to keep your body in insane shape at all times and be as close to sample size as humanly possible, which is not natural for 99.9999% of the population to be constantly critiqued and corrected on your appearance, which is illegal in pretty much every other job in this country. And to put up with an unbelievable amount of everyone else's shit and just keep it chill and just pretend like it's fine. Like, oh, you want me to jump for the 8,000th time today in a size seven shoe when I really wear a 10? No problem. And you jump and you make it look good and you sell the dresses. That's what you're being paid for, okay? That's why you get paid more than pretty much everyone else on set. That's why, because that job is not a job that anybody really wants. Because if it was so easy and you wanted to do it, no one would pay you that much money for it. Modeling is not a glamorous job. There's there's definitely highs to modeling. I think when I started out and I got to spend most of my time like traveling, you know, I started out in Asia and I was 14 and I turned 15 in Osaka, Japan. And then I came home to Utah for the summer. And then I, at 15, I was living in Milan and then I went to Paris and then back to Milan. And then we came back to you know Washington and then I ping ponged around the globe and I was basically based out of either Milan or LA. And when it would get too cold, I would go to Sydney or Cape Town, South Africa. Like that was great. There's no other way that if I wasn't a model that I would have ever been able to see the places and ex- like actually experience places the way that I did as a model. Wow. You know, you're just fully engulfed in it. Like if you're going somewhere as a model and you're going around to casting, you are on the subways, the buses, taking the little tiki, <laughs> the tut-tuts in Thailand, or, you know, you're jumping up in these, these like cabs in Cape Town where you flag it down and it's a white van with a door open and a guy yelling out the thing and jumping in, <laughs> you know, and running around and, and, yeah, I went back and I filmed in Cape Town as a, as an actor and yeah, it was like brought up so much stuff from like all my son modeling there and the other actor is like, his dad is something, British and his dad was something. He's like, how do you know more about Cape Town than like 
my dad does. <laughs> it's like, because dude, I was about been here. <laughs> so that stuff's great. And like, there's definitely been modeling jobs where I'm like, I cannot believe I'm even being paid to do this right now. Like, where it's just yeah. like the most beautiful locations and like, you're shooting swimsuits but it's like a chill like back in the day when they still had catalog and they would only like make you do like 12 shots and like Antigua and you were like they're paying us for this what <laughs> like and then there's a lot of modeling jobs where you're like you couldn't fucking pay me two million dollars to do this shit one more day of my life I will kill everyone here like it's <laughs> it's really there's, there's ups and downs and like the the highs are really, really high and runway shows. Actually doing the show, doing the walk. Oh, that's a high. Oh, that's definitely yeah. a freaking high. Especially when you go out with the finale and the designer and it's like, it's so palpable, the energy. Um, but actually booking the show, starving yourself for the three months prior, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the competitiveness and going broke and like spending 15 grand out of pocket to run around and do your show castings paper model apartment in new york and then fly to paris do castings and fly to new york do castings and shows and then fly back to paris to do the shows and then hopefully go to london if you can get the visa and then go back to new york like no that's awful like i'm sure i i really don't think that there's any model that has done fashion week or a top model that kills it at fashion week that goes i actually absolutely love everything about fashion week no like all of them would be like yeah like it's high the energy like it, like no like he moss is like fashion week go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> hillary wrote i remember like we had the same agency in new york and my booker would tell me like oh yeah as soon as she got that lancome deal she was like by the way now that i have this cosmetic contract don't even think about it. Like it's never happening again. I'm not doing fashion week ever again. I don't care what it's going to do. I'm good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> wow. I, yeah. Modeling sucks. <laughs> I, I've, I've always had an appreciation for you as an, as an actor, but this, just this conversation is like, okay, like, like much bigger appreciation for everything you do. Oh, thanks. I'm blushing. No, oh, that's awesome though. Do you do you have a favorite modeling experience? Or like location? Yeah, yeah. I have a favorite memory. Okay. It's just, like so crazy. So it is just like it's it's not crazy. It's just so funny, like what's considered politically correct now versus then and like how just like because it was when I started modeling was the end of that era. Like when I started, it was still film everything was filming to the Polaroid. You had to sit still, take the Polaroid, wait, don't move a muscle. It develops three minutes later up. Oh, that's not right. Move a light. Like it was a very different thing. So models had like, sorry, what year had you, did you start modeling? 2004. Okay. Just, I didn't want to interrupt your train of thought, yeah, but I just wanted to get that. Okay. So it was a very different time. So that was like the end of that era. And then, you know, as I started making money, it was still considered like if you used Photoshop, you weren't a real photographer. Um, no. So it was a different time. Okay. Um, but my like favorite memory must have been like the end of 2008 or early 2009. I can't remember which leading up to which fashion week. But um, I was working for Moschino and Madame Moschino was... It, Signore Armani did this with me as well. They, they draped the clothes on a live model and made them that way. And Armani always does the Georgia line this way. Moschino would would do it intermittently and it, like not so formal. With Armani, it was like the army of everyone around, and he has his translator, and he would be you know, say out things like, "I want two six seven four Y eight nine. Like he wouldn't even say like, "I want blue fabric." He would say like the actual SKU number, and then someone would run frantically and bring it to him. It was crazy. But Moschino was just like this little spot, and I was like trying to like. To, draw close and she goes oh this is actually very nice you know like you should do this more and she starts draping me and they're chatting in Italian and I smoked a lot like Jane smoked a lot at the time she smoked and she's like smoking a cigarette while draping and sewing this gown on me and she's like she's like do you want some and I'm like 
Yeah, sure. And she took her cigarette out. She goes, but don't move with the needle. She goes, puts it in my mouth to take a drag of the cigarette, takes it back, ashes it forward, and keeps doing it. But we shared a cigarette like this. And I don't know, like for me, like that was probably like the high, like, I mean, that stuff's never, that stuff doesn't happen no more. Like you can't, first of all, you can't even smoke in someone's face in a work environment without getting sued. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I think that's probably that's probably the, the best memory. Okay, that, that that's awesome. Again, the, the, the lows and just too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean that that's really shitty to hear that there's too many lows to name, but I mean that's life, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, we get in place. That's life. That's any job. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Now, um. Yeah. So there's there's also there's an, an obvious love for video games here in the film. Uh, do you have any favorite arcade games or video games? Um, my favorite video game is a tie. So my favorite video games. Uh, so I had a PS4 and I had it like I don't want to say hacked, but you know it was modified to have the, all the old school games. Okay. Um, I love Sonic. I love Sonic the Hedgehog. And then my my tie is PS1 Toomba. Which game, sorry? Toomba. Toomba. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot like Mario. I love I love those like 2D games. I mean, I liked I liked Pac-Man in like the arcade games. Um but I was like one of those kids. I was always kind of hustling, and I was like taking like points for arcade games and buying other shit with it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, dad, give me a couple of quarters. I'm gonna play, like, go to the skating rink, and like, you know, gonna play you know, the games. Like, I do, I love skeet ball and like air hockey and a little basketball machine. But like, no, like me and my friends would put our money together and like go get a beer. We were naughty. <laughs> really playing the game. Like hustling we were really game. playing the game. We were really playing the drinking underage game. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, no, but I actually I I do like old school video games quite a lot. It's the the double analog stick is kind of where they lost me, which is which all, what all games are now. So okay, I I have a lot of time consuming hobbies though. It's probably a good thing that I'm not a gamer. On top of it, I would never get anything done. <laughs> So I guess the the nostalgia in Drive All Night really spoke to you in that way with the classic games. Yeah, I like that. I like the classic games. I was like, yeah, I just don't like Call of Duty and what it does to grown men. <laughs> the swearing in the hot mics that you, you see. Yeah, like I mean, I have an ex that like now that when I'm like on a first date with somebody, I ask them like how how many hours a week you spend playing video. I need to know this now. <laughs> it's like, dude, you are in my rolly chair that's supposed to be my little office area where I study lines. In your underwear with a headset on, three empty beer cans, yelling at a 12 year old, Yeah, I have a girlfriend. She's right here. If I'm like, what the? F I hate it what it does to people, man. I hate what Call of Duty does to people. And it, it's like, it's disgusting. <laughs> you can picture that perfectly. <laughs> I don't want to like, picture it. Oh my God, it, I've but... definitely done that a hundred times. You know, yeah. like, you know, Loki, you're not the only one. Like, it's a very common occurrence. There's many times where I have brought up that series of, because that was not a one time situation up and people are like oh my god my boyfriend too or like yeah that like me oh that's kind of me Loki like no like it's very common I mean I get like all respect goes out the window like leaves my body and goes out the window when I'm playing Uno so like <laughs> Call of Duty like that's just like number cards like you got colors skip reverse you know you look like oh you got the plus four <laughs> you know you're gonna talk shit like yeah that's not on crack because you're playing with strangers where like there's really no real life consequences to what you say and like the whole game is made up of actually murdering people so what it does to to grown-ass men is just sad and I'm, I'm i can't i can't i can't with call of duty 
<laughs> I feel you. <laughs> also, um, yeah, I'm Canadian, so I'll I'll uh, I'll swear at people politely, but when they give a, like, like, so I don't think I could play Call of Duty <laughs> online at least. No, no, no. You would probably just like sit there and snicker. I would just die. I think. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. Is you like die? Well, also like I'm a military brat, and they've always had Call of Duty like in all the barracks. Okay. And then I don't know. I have this like theory that the military like promotes and pours money into like Call of Duty and make sure that all the barracks have Call of Duty and gaming systems to play this game because it kind of teaches your brain that that you'll come back to life. Oh. Okay. Because by repetitively, like it's not only just how like the obvious, you know, plus sizes is that it romanticizes and glorifies war and military service and also teaches you str- strategical maneuvers and gets you comfortable with the noises and stuff. But like, I have this theory that they just like to put those things in there so that the soldiers will sit there over and over and over again and their brains will start to like think like, oh yeah, like, you know, if I fuck up and die, I'm just gonna reboot. Okay. So it like takes away that fear. So I don't know, I think it's, it's a little, it's a little dark. A little. Yeah, well, that's, that's it's that and the grown men in underwear screaming at 12 year olds. It's just a double no for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I have. I have one last one. Um, if and I've asked this for all your your I've asked Peter to Utaka and Lexi this. Um, if you were to get in a taxi or an Uber with someone, like with someone famous, who would you want it to be? Just one. You can you could do a couple. Like in the same car. <laughs> like in the same car. I mean. Oh, that's hard. There's so much pressure. No pressure. You have time. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a really fucked up answer because I'm also a recovering alcoholic, but I would love to get in a taxi with Tracy Morgan when he was still drinking. Because <laughs> I think that that would be the most hilarious, ridiculous cab ride of your life. <laughs> So mating calls. This <laughs> is me. Like that would be good. Like I'm sitting here in my head and I'm like thinking, like man, like Obama, Bernie, like Jack Nicholson's the king, but then Michael Caine is also the king. And Sir Anthony Hopkins is the king, and like oh, like shouldn't I be thinking of like some women too? And then I'm like, why are you trying to like come up with an answer that's gonna make you look good? And then I'm like, who would be the the best? And like it's Tracy Morgan when he was still drinking. That's my answer. I, I really <laughs> like that answer. It's a good one. <laughs> I I feel like we've talked. I might just I might in editing I might put this before that great Tracy Morgan one to end on. But so there's a <laughs> there's a moment like I feel like you've given so much token so many tokens of wisdom on this podcast, but. There's a moment in the film where your character talks about something on the bathroom wall. If you were to like write any token of wisdom on a bathroom wall, what what what, what do you think it would be? Oh, someone else. Asked, no, someone else asked me, "What's the favorite thing you've seen on a token wall?" And if I could write anything on a token wall, <laughs> I mean, I've written things on walls before. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't old enough to drive. Let's leave it there. Okay. Um, man, I don't know. That's fine. I probably write something like silly, like and kind of just like nobody's got this shit figured out because it's like a pun. Okay. Would 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 you? Because you oh. might be actually sitting down. <laughs> <with it. laughs> I I got that a bit a, a couple seconds late. That's been. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, nobody's got this shit figured out, man. Nobody does. It's, just, it's like one of those being like, it'd be like that though. Like, you know. It, it do be like that it's sometimes. That's all you need to hear. It'd be like that. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Like sometimes you don't need some like actual like really helpful advice. You just need somebody to be like, yeah, that sucks, man. But like, nobody's got this shit figured out, bro. It's probably what I'd write. And now I'm going to go write that on the wall. Cause you, okay. 
you've now instilled this urge of graffiti in my brain. So, okay, you just... if I get fine, <laughs> oh, you... sending it to Ottawa, Canada. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Like, just just use a magic marker, not a not a permanent marker. Oh, that's very Canadian. Dry yeah. erase. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Old. Be, be curious. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so yeah, Sarah Dumont, who plays Morgan in Jive All Night. Thank you for being generous with your time and chatting with me on the Film Crazy Show. Well, thank you for having me on the Film Crazy Show, Dan. Awesome. You'll, sorry, I can't yeah. say you, Dan. Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> That's okay. Dan the Good. man. Whatever. You know, it's cool. I like it. Nobody does. <laughs>